what is going on everybody hey san 32 here we are back with another mk1 guide chaos reigns has been out for a few days now and i'm sure you've seen this team a lot whether it be online in your actual games or high level players on youtube or twitter or whatever sector motaro is the talk of the town right now very very strong team and so if you're wondering how to play this team and how to get the most value out of this team this is going to be the guide for you this isn't going to be a full sector breakdown so just keep that in mind i will be talking about some aspects of sectors kit as it relates to the team itself but for the most part this is going to be a breakdown of how these two pair together so first things first let's talk about the lesser important moves with this team so the projectile shield okay now sector is a character that has pretty good screen control she has you know pretty good zoning right straight missile up missile right flame burner has some good range to it right so she's got a lot of tools that she can use she's also got good counter zoning just built into her kit so she has this shield which will absorb a projectile it'll also power up her gauntlets she also has this move very very quick instant meterless launcher so she has in her kit already a lot of really good tools to control this area of the screen and to zone as well as counter zone so you really don't need this projectile shield however some instances there are some projectiles that are you know very fast projectiles such as like a Liu Kang EX fireball right it's gonna be kind of difficult to react to that with some of her moves so in that situation you can use the Motaro's reflect shield to get a uh, to even get a punish in that instance like it's so fast it'll reflect and punish him for throwing out his projectile so you can use the shield in that situation um, and there's a few other situations where you might want to use his reflect instead of her projectile uh, absorb but other than that she really has her own built-in answers to zoning and you know being able to counter zone on her own so you really don't need that um, the low shot so with the low shot for a uh, sector so typically speaking a lot of characters get value out of Motaro because of the low shot because it aids the pressure game right so if you can find a way to jail or condition your opponent to respect the low shot right then you can start getting your pressure going and it really helps out with a lot of characters offense right sector doesn't really need that because she can use her missiles to set up set play and then she can use motaro teleport to basically get in and get guaranteed pressure on oki or whatever the situation is so she her offense is a little bit different and on top of that right she doesn't really need to be approaching the opponent all the time and pressuring them because she has such good zoning and keep away tools you really don't need to rely on this to really start your offense so the low shot is not as important for her now what i will say is that you can jail stand three into low shot that's guaranteed there's no gap in that and i'll just show real quick that there's no gap in this right so i didn't show the armor but just you can see the special doesn't come out anyway so uh there's no gap in that right they have to hold stand three into low shot now with the pushback on low shot right you're really not going to be getting anything guaranteed here right so you can check them with forward two which is forward advancing mid um they're not going to be able to really jump press back dash but they can always armor through that so her pressure off of the low shot is really not guaranteed unless you're in the corner there are some other buttons that you can cancel into low shot if you think your opponent is going to be respecting you for example like back three four that string is completely gapless and safe on block so you can use that string as a meaty check a lot of times too just because the first two hits break armor um so if your opponent is respecting that you can always sneak in like a little cheeky low shot there uh just to, you know get some pressure there too but again same thing you can see the spacing that it puts me at i'm not really getting anything guaranteed so the low shot you can also use it like to aid her zoning too so like if i'm at this range i can stick out the low shot just as something to, to check them with um because you know from this range you might be you know, shooting a lot of missiles and stuff like that um doing like you know your instant air missiles so this little you know quick low shot just to check them from trying to duck in neutral is also really good as well but yeah that's pretty much all the value you're going to get from the low shot um, and then getting into the triple projectiles. So with the triple projectiles, um, kind of similar to the low shot, doesn't really need it for anything specific. Um, she just, her kit by itself is just so strong. Like a lot of what 
she really needs like a lot of her game plan is really just built into her kit already um but the triple projectiles you can use to aid in your zoning so you can you know dot the triple projectiles and then start zoning and it's just it's so much so many projectiles on the screen you're going to be building so much meter and the opponent has to respect it she has ways where she can set that up guaranteed as well so if i do something like this right like that's a guaranteed triple projectile setup there's literally nothing that they can do by the time they even get up the first projectile is already out um so let's say for example like i get a hit and then i want to like kind of lame my opponent out to win the round let's say they don't have much health left right i can do that set up the triple projectiles and just chip them out for free um you can also use it to get into if, if you really want to so you can call this out and then just kind of you know teleport in behind them and just they really can't do much about that so right like there's really nothing that they can do if you time that right the projectile is going to come out and basically keep you safe and now you're just in for free um i wouldn't recommend doing that because you don't have to do that and that spends all your cameo bar but you could do that if you wanted to um but yeah so that's pretty much the triple projectile and then the most important move is the teleport and teleport serves a lot of purpose for her so we're going to break down the teleport so with the teleport um so all of your like standing meterless damage before you go into your launch you can extend all of your combos using either flamethrower into motaro teleport or ex straight missile into motaro teleport and get uh extended damage on all your combos so for example let's say i get a jab punish right i can do something like this right I can do that combo, which will go into my guaranteed setup, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So that's like the set play combo. If I wanted to do something that had like a little bit more optimal damage, I could do something like this. All right, that's about 36% meterless. Again, uh, most of my cameo comes back by the time that combo is over. Uh, you can also do it with straight missiles. So I can do something like this. That was 40% for a bar. Um, if I wanted to do the setup route, it would look something like this. Right, so that's 36% one bar into my guaranteed setup route, which again, I'll explain in a little bit. So yeah, uh, you can also loop this on the ground as well. So if I did something like this, I can actually loop it twice. And that's 42% meterless um, off of two reps of flamethrower into Motara Teleport. So yeah, so all of your combos, you can extend the damage on them if you use Flame Burner or EX Straight Missile into Motara Teleport. Keep them standing and get the extension. Now the other thing too to keep in mind is that uh, Sector's armor is her EX Flamethrower. So I'll just show you real quick what the damage kind of looks like on that. All right. So, almost 24% for an armored launcher is not bad at all. So yeah, that is her. And you can also do the um, the setup route off of the armored launcher as well. So that's pretty good for her too. And now, the two most important things that teleport gives you. First and foremost, teleport gives you safe mix, okay? So, Sector has a low, which is her back three. And she has an overhead, which they're back to. Now, granted, the overhead is slow. It's reactable. But especially online and especially when you have thrown out other options at your opponent, that overhead is going to clip them at some point, right? Especially if they're not, like, really looking for it. Now, if you have somebody that has really good defense and they can react to it every single time, right, they're not going to get hit by it. But people are going to get hit by it eventually. And the beautiful thing about Motaro is that because I can cancel so the thing with her low and her overhead right this low string here right while it is safe on block doesn't have any gap in it right you can special cancel after the first two hits but as you can see it leaves the opponent airborne so i can't do a combo like that i can't do something like that like none of that links 
right? You would have to use a cameo to combo off of this, okay? And off of her overhead string, which is back to two, you can see that string is, is really bad. So this string is not special cancelable. It's punishable on block, right? And you would have to use a cameo to combo off that as well. So going back to what I was going to say originally, because I can combo off of my flamethrower, right? Off both of the low and the overhead option, in order to actually have like a real mix-up threat, I'd have to commit to something. Because I can commit into meterless flamethrower and then use Motaro to teleport and get a conversion off it, right? As long as I have cameo, I can go for a mix-up in that situation and commit to it. And with the teleport, because now you have multiple ranges that you can go, you can actually react to if they block the teleport, or excuse me, if they block the mix or not. And if they block it, you just teleport full screen. If they get hit by it, you teleport next to them and get a combo. So I'll show you what that looks like. Right? So you can react to if they get hit or if they block or not. And if they block it, you can just leave. And just to show you, too, that in order to actually blow this up, right, he has to armor. There's there's no way for him to blow this up unless he armors. Because if he tries to, like, jab through here, right, there's no gap in this. So even if he guesses right on the mix, in order to actually blow me up for going for it, he has to spend a bar and armor through the gap. Right now, if you're playing against somebody that has an armored launcher, you know, you do have to be careful there. But also, let's say, for example, your opponent knows they can blow it up, right? Back three is safe on block, and back two is also safe on block, right? They're both negative six. So if you're, you know, at that next level, you can actually bait that and get a full combo punish because they can't punish the actual buttons themselves. You have to commit to the flamethrower in order for them to be able to armor through it and punish you right now obviously if you're going for the mix you're probably going to commit to it so that's not something that is probably going to happen all the time but you know just in case your opponent is blocking the mix and then armoring and you notice that next time you go for it you can just throw out a mix-up button and then just block and if he tries to armor right you can actually bait out his armor and punish him because both of those buttons are safe so that's just like a next le uh, next layer of mind game there but if you go for the mix and they get hit, teleport behind, get a full combo. If they block it, you just leave. And that brings us into the set play. Now, the mix-up piggybacks right off of the set play because once you do your setup, uh, you can then go for a mix-up there off of the guaranteed setup. Um, but it does require a bit of conditioning. The setup itself is guaranteed, and you can jail your opponent after that. But in order to actually get the overhead to work, you do have to condition your opponent a little bit. Um, but just I'll show a quick combo into how we can get the set play set up, which I, I showed earlier. So if I do something like this, right? So stand three. And then you cancel stand three into any up missile you want. So you can do a far up missile. You can do the regular up missile. You can do the EX up, uh, up missile, which is the homing missile. So this is once it goes up and starts to come down, it's going to track them no matter what. And then what you do is you use the Motaro teleport to teleport behind. And that is going to give us basically a guaranteed setup. So just to show you here, I'm going to have Johnny wake up shadow kick. Right, nothing he can do. I'm gonna have him uh, block the missile and then try to press or try to armor. All right, as you can see right there, I can actually on reaction see if he's gonna block the missile setup or not and then jail him with my 15 frame mid. So you, you have a decent amount of frames there where you can actually uh, you know, jail your opponent and they have to respect it. Now, if you want to go for your mix, which is eventually what you want to start going for, that's the set play, right? You do have to have your opponent conditioned to where 
they are blocking long enough so that you can set up the overhead because if they armor right if they still go for the armor and you go for anything else besides the overhead right it will jail but once you go for the overhead the overhead is too slow to force them to respect it so you do have to condition your opponent before you start trying to go for mix so that they know that they have to block and then that's when you thought the overhead into flame burner and then if they react to that then you can just leave um, and if they get hit by it, you can set it up again. Now, your cameo is not going to be back in order for you to do the teleport again. So if you want to just set up the missile and then start zoning, you can do that. Or if you want to do one of like the max damage or, you know, more optimal damage combo routes that I showed earlier, you can do that as well off of the overhead and pretty much still send them to full screen. And then, you know, you can start your zoning from there if you want. It really is up to you at that point. But yeah, that is how you set up the set play. Um... And that is honestly pretty much the gist of this team. It's really not that difficult of a team to play. Um, the biggest thing is just cameo management, right? So a good thing to note with Sector is that if you want to go for set play, you can always just cancel your jab into your launcher. You don't have to spend your cameo or bar in order to set that up. So if you manage to find a hit, just a raw hit or a punish with your jab or with, you know, most of your buttons, 4 2 one won't combo into this. You will have to spend bar here, right? But again, you can still do it off 4 2 one Right? So you can still do it off a of forward one. Oh, excuse me, uh, off of forward two, my apologies. You can still do it off forward two. Forward two is the mid. So you can still do it off of forward two. Um, but you will, if you want to, like, do the setup without spending cameo bar, you will have to spend a bar of meter off of the mid. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, that's pretty much the gist of, of Sector Motaro. Um, really good character, just in general. Solid zoning. She has solid buttons. Um, armored launcher with Motaro, set play with Motaro, safe mix with Motaro, or safe-ish mix with Motaro. Um, Motaro gives you a lot of good things. Now, one thing I will note is that Kung Lao, if you choose to use Kung Lao, you can do a lot of the same combos and setups as well. The problem with Kung Lao, though, is that Kung Lao does not allow you to get your safe mix, right? Because if I do back three or back two and you block it and i go into kung lao teleport you can actually punish the kung lao teleport you can't punish the motaro teleport so that's the reason i would say motaro is slightly better but kung lao does have good things right kung lao can also give you like meterless combo extensions as well um, pretty much all the same stuff that Motaro does as far as like the extended combos and getting your set play going. It's just that one little thing with the mix that I think Motaro is better. Um, but yeah, without further ado, that is the end of the video. Hope you all enjoyed the guide. I will try to make a guide on Noob Saibot. I think I'm going to do Noob Saibot and Janet Cage. I've been seeing a lot of that as well. So for the people that want to know how to play Noob Saibot Janet, I'll probably make a guide on that soon. And Cyrax, I haven't looked too much into Cyrax, but uh, I'll see what's out there, see what I can come up with, and then I'll give you guys a guide on that as well. So thank you all for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.